Okay, folks, welcome to another Sunday Night Stock Charts Live. This is Bob Desmond, and what we're going to go over tonight are a lot of charts. We're going to go over uh, economic data. We're going to talk about Bitcoin, new all-time highs. That's the chart in front of you. Let's put this on auto refresh. And it just keeps on going up. We're going to talk about economic data coming out this coming week. And, of course, we're going to go over the pre-market activity. And we'll wrap it up with your chart requests. And the way it's going to work is I go through members first. And then I take super chats. We'll stay on all night long if we have to, to go through everybody. But the deadline is 7 o'clock. And if we have time, I will take requests from... The audience, so members, I have Larry, SDGR, we're going to go over Bitcoin, it's another request, not a whole bunch tonight, so it looks like we're going to have some time to go over some Super Chats and some uh, audience requests. All right, so before we begin, let's talk first about our sponsor, and that is TrendSpider. TrendSpider is the next generation in automated technical analysis. They sponsor the program. We are partners. I integrate their product with my product and services, which is our silver and gold level memberships. I value them tremendously. Great guys. I've met them, know them, and they dedicate their life, heart and souls to this product. So learn to automate your grunt work using their product. You also speed up your analysis, improve your accuracy, first and foremost, most important. Uh, reduce costly mistakes. By using their trade alerts, you take out of the equation, knee-jerk reaction, uh, impulse buys, impulse sells. Use the trade alerts. It's a, it's a if this, then that type st strategy of using the alerts. If an alert fires off, then you may take action, not always. Uh, find winning chart setups with their scanners. Time your trades with precisions with the alerts. And for those who are getting to become familiar with technical analysis, go to their claim you, claim you, go to their <laughs> Trend Spider University, and you'll see a number of, I mean, a ton of courses that they have available. So you're not going to be left alone. They will walk you through to ensure that you are a success. They have a seven-day free trial offer. Take the tour. Link below, 35% off. Let's get to Bitcoin. Okay, so Bitcoin, first let me say hello to everybody. That's rude. That's rude. Let's, let's say hello. Franklin, uh, Bob, and everyone, I hope all of you had a great weekend. Same to you, my friend. Amigo, good afternoon. Rare Earth. I have the chart up. I saw your message. I pulled the chart up. We'll go over that chart. I tried to pull up G-A-Y-M-F. I don't know if you're messing with me with that symbol or what, but I can't pull it up. So if you want to double check that to make sure it's accurate. Uh, Trader Isaac, I don't know why they they block you and your... Trader Isaac puts out the most important message of the show, and that is... Smash the like button. He reminds me all the time. And for whatever reason, YouTube blocks it. I just uh, approved it. Matt Carter. Hello to you, sir. Hello from the, to, to the Smoky Mountains. Trader Isaac, DPW. Hello to you. Uh, Denny. Hello. Larry. Thawing out in Louisville. It wasn't that bad here today. It was actually a nice day. Uh, the Nose Goblin. Hello, sir. Haven't seen you in a while. Good to have you. Karim, hello. Good day to you. Paul, hello. Joseph. Dan. Hey, Dan. Okay, let's do this. Uh, Bitcoin, new all-time highs. I'm going to put out there, though, I'm getting a little bit concerned, but I want to dismiss something about uh, Bitcoin. And we've done this in the past. And I want to dismiss it because we've already done the analysis. I've heard these so-called talking head experts on mainstream media. This is why you need alternative media. Click the like button. Subscribe to the channel. I tell you things before they happen. I've been talking about CPI. They've been saying, the talking heads say, there's no correlation between Bitcoin 
and CPI. Wrong, wrong. CPI is surging and so is Bitcoin. I'm going to show you a chart in a moment. We went over it months ago. We dismissed that, that line of, you know what, a while ago. RL, hello. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so Bitcoin all-time highs. <coughs> Warning flag here. A little bit, though. Yesterday, we flashed a doji star formation. That's a sign that a little bit of indecision. Maybe it was due to light volume, perhaps. Weekend volume. But uh, Bitcoin is getting a bit long in the truth. And I'll, I'll reference the quarterly chart. RSI, 88 spot, 39. You know, if you go to the yearly chart. Actually, no, monthly chart. Monthly chart, RSI, 91 spot, 36. So I still think the path of least resistance is still higher for Bitcoin. But just be careful. You're able to hedge Bitcoin now. So if you're long, you don't want to sell, you don't want to pay taxes, fine, I get it. At least think about at some point in time throwing on a hedge or booking some profits. Uh, what else do we have out there? We're going to go to the futures action in a moment. 10-year yield, folks. We're going into a new trading week. And we've been warning for months now. Nobody else is talking about it in the mainstream media. We were talking about it here, alternative financial media. And I said, W formation forming, expect a rally in the 10-year yield. We got that rally. We drew this red line here a few weeks ago, connecting the prior highs on the 10-year yield. We blew through it like a hot knife through butter. Huge blast through. Uh, we broke out the week of the 1st, retest the week of the 8th, continuation breakout last week. Do we go higher? It looks that way. What else do we have? Yield curve. I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but folks, this is dangerous. Dangerous for the stock market. The steepening yield curve has led to the end of stock market rallies, not rallies, bull markets before. 2007, steepening yield curve, didn't end well. 2000, steepening yield curve, S&P 500, overlaid in blue, didn't end well. Horrible for the NASDAQ, just bad, bad, bad for the S&P 500. VIX, monthly chart. The month is not over. But you could see that we have been consolidating at 20 for months now. They can't knock the VIX down. This is stock bearish. Now, Kathy Wood from the ARC Funds was on CNBC. I'll, I'll drop this link if you want to take a listen to her interview on CNBC. And she's warning of... There will be fear. ARK, ARK Invest, Kathy Wood warns of a stock market correction. And these high-flying stocks, at least she was honest, I'll give her that. The ARK phenomenon should be, could be derailed with underperformance as rates continue to surge. She said this herself. Prime candidates for valuation resets. These high beta names, the NEOs of the world, Teslas of the world, beware. Those are going to fall hardest if we get a stock market correction due to yields spiking up higher. S uh, small caps. We are short of the Qs. We are short of the small caps. Running through why? Because now the media is paying attention. The spread between the Russell 2000 Relative to its 200 period moving average in, it's at the zero line here, in brown. We are so well beyond anything ever recorded in history. I can't put it into words. Let's just say the green bar is overbought, right? Uh, this was too, this was, I'm sorry, it was close to this being high back in between 1980 and 1984. We're still well beyond that. Here's the dot-com bust. We're well beyond that. Uh, the 
financial crisis, well beyond that. Beware. Unsustainable. Price to sales. We are at historic price to sales. The Russell 2000 is so expensive, I cannot put it into words. That is why we are short of it. We plan on adding more. So beware. As you go into the new trading week, if you're not familiar with bonds, get familiar. The bond market is the tail that wags the stock market dog. I always say that. As goes the bond market, so goes the stock market. These yields are being unleashed on us, and high beta tech stocks are going to get knocked on their you-know-what. Be careful. Other headlines. Michael Burry, I'm not going to go into this too much, warns of why more hyperinflation is coming. Gold, gold, gold. Wait for the pullback. We're going to be jumping in. Uh, do we have anything else to go over? Oh. I'm going to skip this. It just talks about asset performance during uh, big periods of inflation. And I, I, I wanted to go over, I'm, I'm going to do this because it's important. So this goes back to the 1970s. The last time we had stagflation, that's inflation, but stagnant growth. So what you need to do is you need to take a look at performance during that time frame, but you need to take a look at nominal returns versus real returns. Nominal returns are relative to the U.S. dollar, right? Real terms are adjusted for inflation. So commodities back during the 1970s returned 133%. But in real terms, with inflation, they returned 23%. Treasuries in nominal terms were up 50%, but in real terms, adjusted for inflation, they were down. Same thing with U.S. corporate corporates. Equities were down in real terms. So infl if inflation really gets ripping here, and it appears that it is, beware of the equity market and start looking at commodities to preserve your purchasing power because the U.S. dollar is going down and they want it to go down because they want to try to inflate our way out of all of our debt. Inflation be damned. Economic data coming out this coming week. Uh, Monday, we have a Fed head coming out, no big deal. This could impact Tuesday, NFIB. This is the Small Business Sentiment Index. That can move the small caps, job openings. I'm not sure if this is the jolt job openings. This is one of Janet Yellen's favorite uh, indicators of economic growth or the lack thereof. The CPI comes out on Wednesday. Critical number this week. All eyes are going to be on this. Remember, last week we had the PPI. The producer price index came out and it was hot. There is inflation. The question is now, is it being pushed through to the consumer? Actually, this is the wrong... Oh, man, I'm not such an ass. I knew this was wrong. I scratch all the indicators, all the econ economic data coming out next week. The Feb economic data coming out this week, this is so embarrassing, only when I'm live. Uh, leading economic indicators coming out tomorrow. Uh... Consumer confidence on Tuesday. Jay Powell is going to testify. Great. Uh, he's going to testify Tuesday, Wednesday. He's going to say the same prepared stuff. Uh, durable goods. Very, very important. Keep an eye on that. Those are the uh, manufacturing and sales of washing machines, dryers. It should be higher. They should be higher, given the housing boom. Core inflation on Friday. I knew there was an inflation data coming out this week. That's what got me confused. So we have core inflation coming out. On Friday, the 26th, University of Michigan Sentiment Survey, Chicago PMI, a big week for economic data. Woo! Wow. Let's get to the charts. First, let's take a look at some comments. Um, Cena, hello, brother. Falcon. Falcon, thank you for letting me know about Falcon, who was one of the people that told me that on my website, people went to go check out. And one of the, I fixed one of the buttons. There was actually two buttons to check out. 
that wasn't working. He pointed it out. I have one fix. I did it myself. I'm waiting on the developer to fix the other one. If you look at the sign up, there are links below that'll take you to the checkout page. So thanks, Falcon. Appreciate that. Uh, Pat. Hey, Pat. I know I just got a text from you to a video. I'm going to check it out. Hope you had a great day with your grandson. Will. No worries, brother. Glad you're here. Uh, gold, 1785. We'll take a look at that in like two seconds. Denny, how do you feel about Harry Dent? How do you feel about his call on a stock market collapse in April? I know that I saw an interview with, with uh, Harry. Um, I like Harry. Uh, I respect his work. I think that he was wrong on gold. I think that he'll admit that he is wrong on gold uh, because he was saying that gold was going to go down a year ago, it didn't go down. It actually made new all-time highs. I believe with Harry that there is going to be, and this is a split between Peter Schiff and Harry Dent. Uh, the uh, Harry believes that there's going to be a surge of cash if the stock market sells off into 20-year, 30-year, uh, not corporate debt, into treasuries. I agree with that. I think he's probably going to be proven right. You're seeing the TLT, which is a 20-year bond ETF, get annihilated. It's nearing a buy zone. If the stock market sells off and we get that crash, he's, he's being very, very specific. So he must be very confident. I'm not sure what indicator he's using, but um, I, I'm not going to argue with him. I, I'm pretty bearish myself. Would I say it's definitely going to be April? Probably not. That's a little bit too bleak. Uh, what, am, I, am I confident that we're going to get a severe stock market correction? Yes, I am. The only reason why I'm not going to go for the, uh, for the stock market crash Argument is because of the tsunami of of liquidity coming our way. So that's making me stay a little bit on pause with making that uh, that call. But I'm not going to say he's wrong. I do think that there's going to be a correction, though. Uh, I read Bitcoin could have a short squeeze. Yeah, they could they could they can manipulate a short squeeze on Bitcoin. Remember, it's traded in fu on the futures market now, so they can manipulate uh, a short squeeze. Uh, TM, what picks are good to make money with all this good information? Uh, a couple. I did um, the best stock charts for the coming week. That is linked in YouTube. I put that out yesterday. I did another video today on uh, Quorva, QRVO. And that is a semi-manufacturing name. It broke out on Friday. It's looking very good. I think Boeing is looking pretty good. Big monthly cup with handle formation. So there's there. if the market doesn't correct, there are still some names out there that are looking good. The question is, what's going to prevent the correction? You're going to have to see a pullback in the 10-year yield. Or if you don't get the pullback, you're going to have to see the U.S. dollar tank. You cannot have a rising U.S. dollar and a rising 10-year yield from this point. The stock market will not allow it. It will correct. You will get a revaluation if that occurs. So watch the U.S. dollar. We're going to go to it in a moment and watch the 10-year yield. In fact, let's get to it. All right, so this is a four. Uh, actually, no, it's not a four-hour chart. Let's go to a four-hour chart first. We can always drill down. This is the NASDAQ 100. The NASDAQ 100 moved higher, then reversed. We are now down on the session. Let's say we're flat. I mean, we're right there. We could turn positive in the blink of an eye. Um, where are my indexes? S&P, the E-minis. Very similar to the NASDAQ 100. Uh, a bearish reversal bar thus far, very early in the trading session. We can easily reverse to move up higher here, but we are lower. Let's check out the Russell 2000, of which, again, we are short. Why are you freezing? There we go. Uh, they gapped up higher. We are now we're flat on the session. I mean, can't get more flat. Now they just went positive. So not much happening here. In equities, let's take a look at the U.S. dollar. Now, the dollar on Friday evening, I'm just realizing this now. There was a lot of activity on the U.S. dollar 
after the close on Friday. It's attempting to break out. And that is not stock market friendly. Let's take a look at the 10-year Treasury note. Folks, if you're not watching the 10-year Treasury note, you got to start, please, I beg of you. Oh, my God. Gap down. We're down a quarter percentage point. That's a huge move. Now, I'm going to make a prediction because we are looking to buy the TLT. Again, the 20-year bond ETF. Let's bring that chart up for a moment. Then we're going to take a look at gold. Sorry for the uh, awkward silence. Talk, st- talk amongst yourselves. Uh, where is it? TLT. Isn't it in Vesco? TLT. iShares. Here we go. All right. So that's not what I want. This is what I want. Okay. So the TLT, I came very close to pulling the trigger on as a buy on Friday because we hit this lower band of support. I held off, though, because I did some analysis on TrendSpider. And I got a alert or an automated automated trend line. Right down here. And this is the value of automated technical analysis. So I wanted to set up an alert, which I did, just shy of it to get alerted to that we're we're nearing that buy point on the TLT daily time frame. And in fact, I believe it's on a weekly as well. No, I guess not. But uh, good support at the 142 mark. To one, I, If I see a 141 handle on TLT, I'm probably going to step in because that probably means that we've seen a bottom, then yields are going to start taking a chunk because right now, with, with bonds dropping, yields are rising right here, right now. I'm surprised the stock market isn't down more. So... If the stock market sells off, expect money to rotate into the U.S. dollar and into long-dated treasuries, 20-year, 30-year. That's the Harry Dent uh, thought process on where money's going to flow. I kind of agree with it. It's nothing new. It's generally what happens. So you don't want to stay there very long. When you get a VIX, and this is what I'll be looking for, if and when we do get that sell-off, When we get a VIX, I had this up before. What happened to it? Here I'm using a, I believe it's a seven seven standard deviation Bollinger Band. So you can see that this seven standard deviation Bollinger Band on the VIX, once you start ripping through that Bollinger Band, you're nearing a bottom in stocks. If we do get a real severe sell-off in the market, then I'm going to take that money out of bonds, rotate it into, we're going to have to take that leap of faith and buy when there's blood in the streets and buy uh, some really good stocks, buy the stocks that are on your watch list. So... And the margin debt right now is at historic highs. So once the forced liquidation begins, look out below.
Okay, that's that. Let's take a look at gold. Four hour chart. It's going to be difficult for, for gold to catch a bid if yields rise and the dollar rise, if not impossible. At some point in time, you're going to see the U.S. dollar uh, collapse and you're going to see yields rise. And it's going to be like circa 1970s where yields rise and gold rise until yields get to where they're supposed to be. And then all of a sudden gold collapses. So right now, four hour chart. Uh, we're up on the session. I'm not confident we're going to hold this level. We may, but I'll be concerned about a rising dollar and rising yields taking the legs out from gold, but it may hold up there. Now, what held up fairly well last week was silver. Where the heck is silver? There we go. And silver is up, but it's off the highs. A very strong consolidation here. So the jury is out on silver. The ideal situation for us is that we do get a sell-off in this market. And what I'll be looking at are the silver miners, the gold miners. I'm reluctant to add more paper silver here. We are long of uh, the AGQ, which is a leveraged ETF. I may look at the PSLV. That's the Sprott Closed Fund for silver. That means they have all the silver underlying that fund. Whereas the SLV... They, they just changed their perspective, saying we may not have all the silver it, it, under our roof if uh, the, sh the price surges on silver and everybody, everybody moved in for redemptions. They don't have enough silver. Sprott does. That's the difference. But Sprott is a closed-end fund, whereas the SLV is an open-ended fund. Uh, let's take a look at VIX. VIX, no great shock here, is up. Let's circle back to the S&P 500 really quick. So the S&P 500, slow melting weakness here. On Let's go to a 30-minute chart. Yeah, we're, we're, we're fading here a bit. Not a tremendous amount of volume. If we have time before I log off tonight, we'll circle back here. The Russell 2000 weakening up as well. Now down nearly a quarter of a percentage point. We had a failed breakout. You know, this is this could all reverse. You know, it's still early, very light volume. Maybe we'll close, uh, open up double digits tomorrow. Who knows? But um, in the early goings here, not looking the best for equities because yields are rising. Let's check out agriculture. Ag, yeah, these are soybeans looking good, looking like they're ready to break out here. Wheat, coming off of its lows, up about a third of a percentage point, a little bit more. Oats, they got sold off late Friday, consolidating now. They are up now, nearly a quarter percentage point. 
Let's circle back to that 10-year Treasury note. About the same. This was a dead cat bounce. Look at that. Back to gold really quick. I'm going to create an alert here. I just want to know if we fade on gold. I want to buy more gold miners. I want to buy more silver miners. I'm hoping for one last washout, and then they take it up higher. And in fact, you know, on a bullish note for gold, I, I, I forget, I think it was somebody on, uh, somebody responded to one of my videos on, I think it was either Twitter or uh, YouTube. And they said, you know, take a look at gold on a monthly chart. It's a cup with handle formation. And they're right. So my my opinion right now, while it's kind of somber on gold, you know, I think that we're going a lot higher. So here's your cup and here's your downward sloping handle on gold. But I'm not going to wait for a breakout above the handle to begin buying. And you can see that even on um, the Stokes, we're beginning to flatten out here. So here's your cup, downward sloping handle. Volume is not heavy to the downside. So longer term, we're bullish on gold. It's just consolidating. Uh, uranium, yeah, we were long of uranium. I sold it. I pulled back and then it just went ripping higher. Uh, yeah, I like uranium. A bubble could last weeks, months, years, but in my opinion, since things are sped up so much, now happen sooner than later. Yeah, well, the thing that, you're always looking for that pin, right? And uh, arguably, you're welcome, Danny. Arguably, M. McNeil, yes, we're still short of Twitter. We've added. I want to add more. I think it's a bubble. I shouldn't use that. I'm using it too frequently. I think it's overbought, very, very overbought Twitter. So, yeah, we're still short. Um, the 10-year yield is the, is the pin. That's the pin. You have yields moving up higher. Valuations are already so beyond anything we've ever seen in history. And now stocks don't need to go down or up right now. They, all they need to do is go trade sideways, and the rise in yield is just going to eat into valuations because the cost of borrowing is going to increase, and that comes right off their EPS. Okay. Okay. Let's do some uh, chart requests. And again, I'm going to thank our friends over at TrendSpider for their sponsorship. And what do we have? Larry SDGR. Not much data here on a monthly time frame. Very strong. Strong chart. Weekly chart. Before we leave the monthly chart, 
We have a few trading days left to go here. Take note of volume. It's declining sequentially. I don't like that. This is what I want to see. Rising up volume. Weekly chart. All right, so we've entered the consolidation range. <clears throat> the lower band of that range is at 90, 99.76, the high at around 111.50. I don't see a compelling reason to go buying tomorrow morning. We're in the middle of that trading range. What I would like to see is another retest of support. Doesn't have to be exactly right on the dime. Or you could add to your position if hit at this lower band. Or open a position if you don't get hit on a pullback. You want to make sure you close above. You want to close above 111.50 per share. And if it fails to hold, if it drops back down into this trading range, I, I wouldn't stick around. I would just stop out because that's a breakout point failure. So SDGR looking good. It's consolidating. No great rush here. Let the shares come to you or allow them to break out and then buy the breakout or wait for the pullback. One of the two. Justin, what do you think of OPT setup for this week? All right. Um... I had heard, I think it was Franklin that told me this, that they're buying Bitcoin to circumvent Iranian sanctions. If that's true, that's a major problem. That makes the shares to me uninvestable. But let's make the assumption, let's make the assumption that uh, that isn't the case. How do the shares look on a technical time frame, a t technical basis? Well, they haven't hit my trigger yet. I have, a, I have a, a trigger set down here, an alert. As a matter of fact, it expired. I got to reset this. We'll keep this active for another 30 days. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pay up for OPTT. Daily chart. We flashed a blue doji on Friday. So something's going to happen here very soon. Last time we had a blue doji was back here, January the 28th. And it was a move up higher than we sold off. I'm not sure which way this is going to go. We do have resistance above here.
I'm not sure. Uh, we've been in a, in a downtrend. This may indicate that that downtrend is now over and we're going to begin to move up higher. But just beware uh, that this is akin. For those that are not familiar with raindrop charts, raindrop charts are a hybrid of candlestick charting and VWAP, volume weighted moving average. So if you're familiar with candlestick charting and you see a doji star formation, that's a sign of indecision. That's the same thing as when you get a blue raindrop. It's like a doji star formation. So something's going to happen here real quick early this week. So I'll look for it to hold this lower band of support or this lower band of support. I'm not going to pay up right here right now. Unless, of course, it breaks out with a surge in crude oil prices, then maybe I'll do it. But probably not. Oh, Franklin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, Bitcoin is you. Iran is using Bitcoin to get around sanctions to buy their product. Got you. All right, so it's not OPT buying. Yeah, why would they buy it? To, all, right, all right, all right, I get it. So Iran is using Bitcoin to circumvent the, the sanctions, but they're going to get called out on this. So that's not a wise move for a small company to make the enemies of the United States. And their offshore drillers, or not drillers, but their business is offshore, and you're going you're gonna to deal with the U.S. Navy? That doesn't sound right. McCarter, you, 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 you. Energy fuels. Good day on Friday. Way too extended here for my blood. We're trading above the 3D Bollinger Band, three, third standard deviation Bollinger Band. Volume this month, very, very good. Great price action, but it's extended. Weekly chart. You know, we're too far extended from the breakout point. We've never come back down to do a retest. And if this market sells off, it's entirely possible. Keep this active for a couple of weeks. I think it's interesting. And a pullback to the support level will allow this froth to come off. Daily chart. Good day on Friday. I really like the price action. Inside day. So it could quite possibly embarrass me by going up higher. But again, folks, you know, trading above the third standard deviation Bollinger Band, it's not going to last. In fact, we broke out on, uh, on Friday. Good volume into the close, according to the raindrop chart. The right side of the raindrop is the afternoon price action. The left side of the raindrop is the morning action. If you get a big, fat, pregnant belly at the top of the raindrop in the afternoon, that means it was buying into the close. So very, very strong price action on Friday. You, 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 you. Short-term bullish, longer term. I'm concerned about that monthly chart. DNNN. Denison Mines, miners getting clobbered lately. Yeah, and this is what you're probably going to see on you, 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 you. This doesn't end well. These surges above the third standard deviation Bollinger Band don't end well. And that's what you're seeing now. And there's still more to come off here. Weekly chart. Bearish key reversal bar last week. Where do I think it's heading? The heat maps are picking up a range down here 
with a high of 53 cents per share. I don't think it's going that low, but we could see 84, 85 cents per share on an extreme pullback. Daily chart. This 106 mark is looking pretty good as well. So that may hold. So DNN, price target number one to the downside, $1.06. If it breaks, $0.85. Cents, those are your price targets. NNDM. Nano Dimensions. We've gone over this a bunch of times now. And we had an alert that fired off. But it, it failed to close. This is what I mean. Before I change this, I want to illustrate what I mean here about closing breakouts, right? So this alert, I set an alert watching for a breakout above this declining resistance line. Now, it fired off. I didn't go opening a trade. Why? It's because it failed to hold the breakout. It couldn't close above that breakout point. So we start anew. We remove. Create a new alert. Breakout. No sensitivity. Let's pull back. See how we closed out the week last week? Yeah, this is a, yeah, this is a problem. This is a problem. We broke out the week of February the 1st. Continuation breakout the following week, which is good. The topping tails were telling you and look where we found resistance. Right near the highs of January. January the 25th, the week of. And what's concerning here is that while we pulled back, we were unable to hold 1450 per share. That's a problem. That's a breakout point failure. Or a bull trap. So that tells me that we're coming down here at a bare minimum to 1325, and we could quite possibly break. You don't want breakout point failures or, or bull traps. At a bare minimum, you get a retracement to the prior lower band of support here. But many times, that support level breaks. So beware here, be careful. Let's go back to that daily chart for a moment. Now, you didn't have a lot of down pressure last week on volume. So you didn't see a lot of institutional distribution. Just beware of that weekly chart, okay? Please. D DPW. Ooh, e ah, daily chart looks good. We'll come back to this. Monthly chart. We're stair stepping higher, which is nice to see. The problem is, is that we have resistance above. That has to be dealt with. 
weekly chart. Now, it tried to break out last week. It was unable to. Every time I type, I think about my high school typing teacher. For those of you that, <laughs> for those of you that are uh, somewhat younger than me, we used to have typing classes, and it was an easy credit. And I knew the teacher, Miss Jackson, was hotter than heck. And I thank goodness every single time I type that she taught me my home row keys. So, God bless Miss Jackson. And uh, thank you for teaching me what you did and for being such a really good teacher. Uh, so let's keep this active for a couple of weeks, all right? To that daily chart, the, uh, before we leave the weekly chart, volume rose last week, very, very good. Now, daily chart, you can see that we're right there. We're fighting tooth and nail to worm our way through resistance. But I think that once we get a close above 738 per share, this thing's going to rip. And we'll keep this active for a couple of weeks as well. Uh, I like the spinning top formations here. That implies that there's indecision, tug of war. I think that bulls will probably win out. That assumes the market holds up. And NDM we went over. A bunch of people looking for that. STLB. Sterling business? What the heck is this? What, did they just come public? This is not working for me. Who's that, RL that requested this? STLB. STLB. I typed it in right. You may want to recheck that. Is that a, I'm not sure what exchange that's on. I get Canadian and U.S. markets. Uh, all right, let's talk about Twitter. It was asked, why am I still short of Twitter? Oh, that may be what's wrong. Nope. All right, Twitter. All right, so Twitter, just the other day, had RSI of about 87. Now, we have... Very strong resistance above. And you may be saying the stock's at all-time highs. Uh, how could we have resistance above? Well, TrendSpider is as an algorithm. And that algorithm is picking up prior highs during certain cycles of bull runs. And it extrapolates out those highs. And it gives us a upper band of resistance on a stock that's at all-time highs. And where do we get stopped dead? And where we entered or added more last week, just shy of that resistance level. So if they try to rally it again, I'm going to lean in more on Twitter. 
because if you take a look at the monthly chart, we're trading well above the third standard deviation Bollinger Band, not supposed to be there. We're just shy of very serious resistance. So we're going to remain short. And I'm wrong if we they break it out above resistance, it consolidates. And it consolidates so much that it takes off the froth of that monthly chart. I don't think that's going to happen. I think Twitter's going to get clubbed over the head like a baby seal once this market gets sold off. You don't have the uh, President of the United States or the former President of the United States on Twitter any longer. They're kicking off anybody that's of interest. Parlors back up. I can already show you that they're dropping in the ratings of visits from at, they were the 33rd most popular site at the time of the election. After the election, they moved all the way up to 29th most popular site. They have now since pulled back to number 33. So they're losing viewership. I have a, a, a Chrome tool that shows me that. So Twitter, I don't like. I don't like their management. I like nothing about the company. It's a toxic cesspool, and it's overbought, and I want to take advantage of it. And if the stock top market sells off, this is going to sell off hard as well. BTWN for Pat. We have a monthly chart breakout. A weekly chart breakout. Same resistance level as the monthly chart. Daily chart. Our alert fired off. On the breakout, it closed there. Now what I want to do is do we get a retest? So on that retest, I think it's very attractive, and that would be at around sixteen seventy per share. Give or take a dime. What else did you have, Pat? Uh, DPW. We just went over this one. Uh, what else? SPRQ, Spartan Acquisition. Really very little data on a monthly time frame, weekly time frame. Uh, it's tough. It's consolidating. We finally recaptured support. Here's what I would do. I'd buy the breakout. And that is that. All right. So, Pat, you're done. BFT for Big Bear. How you doing, Big Bear? Do, do we already go over this one? Or was this from the other day? I got to start writing these down. No, we didn't go over this one. Um, 
no data monthly. I'm liking it. It's trying to break out 1740, real serious resistance. Where do we close? We're right there. 1739, we closed that. We're right there. Very close to a breakout here. Uh, wait for a breakout above 1750. If it closes above there, game on to the long side. Let's circle back and we'll leave off with a review of the markets. Gold is holding steady. The dollar is down. These are 30 minute charts. Let's circle back to the 10 year yield. A 10 year treasury, no, not the yield. I, a bit of a rally back here, not as bad. That rally back on the 10-year Treasury note allowed for the Russell 2000 to rally and break out on a 30-minute time frame. NASDAQ 100 now positive. You see how powerful the movement of the 10-year Treasury is and the movement of the U.S. dollar? By the dollar dropping and the bond price rallying, that allowed stocks to rally. S&P 500, flat on the session, now positive. And with that, folks, I want to say thank you very, very much for spending your uh, Sunday nights here. I really appreciate it. A great group, as always. If I could ask you to please smash that like button, share with a friend, subscribe to the channel, and tell your friends about alternative financial news media. You get the truth here. You get the, the charts that I've been talking about for months that are just now hitting the headlines We've been talking about the 10-year yield, yield curve, hyperinflation. Now they're talking about it on the headlines. We've been talking about it for a while. So let's not wait for a market reaction to the downside to occur before the mainstream media really starts clamoring about it. They'll point their finger and say it was yields that dropped the market. Well, we've been telling you that's a problem for quite some time. So, again, thanks for being here. Smash the like button, subscribe, and I'll talk to you soon. Have a profitable trading week. Be well.